Hey, welcome back to the channel. Today's going to be kind of an interesting one because I'm going to show you how to send and receive iMessage messages from your Windows machine. Now, in order for this to work, we're going to be running software called Bluebubbles that does need to run on a Mac. There's a server side that runs on the Mac, client side that runs on Windows. So you just need any old Mac. I'm doing it on a 2014 Mac Mini. You can get something even older than that off of Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace or eBay. It may work in a Mac OS V. I haven't tried it in there, so if you try that and it works, let me know down in the comment section below. I'm going to walk you through the entire setup of both the server side and the client side and get things going. If you have any questions along the way, leave those down in the comment section below. And with that out of the way, let's jump onto the Mac Mini and get the server side set up. All right, so here we are on the desktop of the Mac Mini, and you might notice that I'm running Catalina. Now, the reason I'm running Catalina and not Big Sur is because there was changes in the API for Big Sur that block uh, blue bubbles from creating new messages. So if you're on a client device and you try to create a new conversation, you won't be able to if your server is running Big Sur. If you're running Catalina or Blow, you're good to go. So I just downloaded this to Catalina. Hopefully that's something that they'll find a workaround for in the near future, but that's the way it is as of the time of this video. Now, before we get into any of the blue bubbles configuration or anything, the first thing you need to do is set up the Mac with your account enough so that you can use messages. Now, basically you just have to have your messages account and uh, your contacts synced. You don't have to do your whole iCloud thing. You can come into preferences and go to messages and then just um, sign in here if you want, or you can connect it to iCloud, however much you want, but the minimum you need is your messages to show up in here. So with that out of the way, let's jump into the Bluebubbles configuration. So the first thing you wanna do is go out to the Bluebubble site. I have it right here and I'll put a link down in the description. There's two areas we're gonna focus on. Uh, one is the install area. So this is just a set of installation steps that take you through getting this thing set up. And this is basically what I'm gonna be doing in this video. And then there's the downloads area. This is where we're gonna go first. There's the client uh, options, and we're gonna talk about those more in, you know, later in the video. And then there's the server. This is what we're gonna install on our Mac. So you wanna click and download that. It's a relatively quick download. I've already downloaded it onto my machine. I have it here. So I'm just gonna click on this DMG and open that up. Once it opens, we'll just drag the blue bubbles into the applications folder. It takes just a few seconds. And then we can close this down, hit our command space, type in blue bubbles. You can see I have it in there already. Give this a few seconds to start up. It's probably gonna ask us if we're sure we wanna open it. Yes, we are. Okay, so this is our setup screen for Blue Bubbles, and we'll get into this in just a few seconds. But the first thing we wanna do is go into our system settings, and we're gonna to go to security and privacy, and then down to full disk access. We wanna make sure that Blue Bubbles is checked. If it's not checked already, just click on the lock icon, put in your password, and then make sure that's checked, and then you can just close out of here. Now we need to set up some of this other stuff. So the first thing we're gonna do is put in a password for this server. And just because I'm just doing a test here, I'm just gonna use the word password. Obviously you're gonna to wanna to use something a little more secure than that. Now you can click this to support uh, SMS for the desktop clients. And the next things that we wanna deal with are the FCM server and the google-services.json file. So we're gonna go and set that stuff up now. If we go back to our browser, we need to go to consoles.firebase.google.com. Again, I'll have a link down in the description. You're gonna log in with your Google account and just create a new project. We're gonna call this Blue Bubbles. Make sure that uh, the Google Analytics for this project is off and then create project. Okay, our new app is created, so we can go ahead and click continue on that. Now we're in our project, we need to create a real-time database that these messages are gonna sync to. So we'll click here, create a database, pick our location, hit next, just leave that in lock mode and 
click Enable. We'll let this finish. So now our real-time database is created. So we're gonna go into our project settings, our service account, and we're gonna generate a new private key for this project. And then we're just gonna save this project key locally. So now that bluebubbles.json file, if we minimize this and go into our downloads folder, we can just take this file and drag it right into our FCM server option in Bluebubble setup. So we're just gonna drop that in there. And the next thing we need to do is do the Google services.json file. So in order to generate that next file, we're gonna go back into our Firebase. We're gonna to go to our project settings and go to the general tab. And then we're gonna click on this little Android icon here. And then we're gonna generate our company name. So just put in something like com.yourname.bluebubbles. We're gonna click register app. And then we're gonna download this JSON file just like we did last time. And then we can go back into our Bluebubble setup into our downloads directory and drag that Google services.json into the spot where it asked for that file. Hit continue. And at this point, the server is all set up. If you're on a mobile device, if you're doing this on an Android device or something, you can just scan that QR code for other devices. You can type in that server address with that port. So but now that the server is done, let's jump onto the client computer and finish that configuration there. All right, so we got that server all set up and now we're gonna start on the Windows client side installation. Here we are on my Windows desktop and all I'm gonna do is just go out to the Bluebubble site again. And this time we're gonna download the Windows client. We already got the server set up. So we're gonna download the Windows client and just grab the latest version. We're gonna get this exe. All right, so we got that executable downloaded. We're just gonna click it to open it up and go through the setup here. It's uh, unsigned, so we just have to tell it to run it. Okay, so here we are at the setup. Now this is going to be the URL that's displayed on the server along with that password. So I'm gonna pause right here so I can type that in and then I'll come back and we'll continue on. So there we go, we got our URL typed in and our password that we created and we're just gonna hit connect. This will take just a few seconds to verify everything. It's gonna download the messages. You can see it syncing there. And then we'll get into a little demo to show you this is actually working. And here we are, we have the Bluebubbles client running in Windows. We're now ready to send and receive iMessages from Windows to show you how this works. I'll just go into here and do a little test. And there we go, sending and receiving iMessages from Windows using Bluebubbles. Now something to keep in mind is you have to have that Mac mini or whatever machine you have Bluebubble server running on all the time, and you have to have the server software running all the time as well so it can send those messages back and forth, but it's been pretty solid for me. Now, I hope you found this useful or informative. If you did, please hit that thumbs up. If you really liked it and you wanna see more like this, Make sure you hit that subscribe button. If you have any questions or comments, leave those down in the comment section below. And I will see you in the next video. Thanks so much for stopping by.